Tunnel vision gets a bad rap sometimes. In this episode, I talk about how it can help. The Embody podcast accompanies you on your journey of remembering and embodying your true nature, integration and alignment with your vibrational clarity, self-love, and living a life of beauty and wholeness. It's a menu of transformative healing tools, experientials, meditations, and practices from a blend of family constellations, somatic therapies, and holistic and spiritual practices sprinkled with vulnerable conversations with people who have the courage to be themselves, Alive Now episodes with updates on my personal process, and reverie episodes that are spiritual succulents that honor, reveal, hug, shake, or stir you into love. I'm your host, Candice Wu, integrative and intuitive healing facilitator and artist. Hello, welcome back to the Embody Podcast. This is Candice. It's so good to have you here. And I just want to give you a few updates on my life. I uh, had mentioned a couple weeks ago that I'd gotten sick, that I'd gone through an existential transformation, which was like an ego death. It was like feeling the darkness, feeling parts of me die and um, parts of my identity shift, where I'm stepping more into artistry and expression. I started a voiceover program and there was a distinct day where things started to feel completely different. I felt for a while that my body was like fragmented. I was not in one piece, so to say, that I could say I was falling apart in a way, like emotionally. I felt like I was grieving a death. And after many days of that grieving, I felt whole again. I felt more coming like cohesive. And after that, things started to flow in such a good way. Last week, I really wanted to start my garden. I have a half an acre of grass and um, it's just been my dream to create a vegetable garden, to plant a lot of my own things and to have tons of wildflowers and I don't really want grass. I just would rather have ground cover so I don't actually have to mow any lawn. But mostly I want to fill the space and create some winding pathways and archways with wood, uh, like sticks and branches that I find. And I'm hoping that people will offer me, exchange with me different plants that they have so I don't actually have to go and buy them. So last week I went to pick up some free compost that I... um, I had found a post on Facebook Marketplace, and this woman wanted the exact opposite of what I wanted, which was just such a feeling of like, like magic. It was so synchronous. It was just like, I am in the flow. And to me, it feels like the flow is just where everything comes together so nicely and everything's working for everybody that's involved. So I wanted plants. She wanted to kill all the plants. She said she was going to put weed killer on everything. And she had weeds that I wanted. (laughs) Weeds. There are so many different weeds that are yummy and good to eat. Anyway, she just wanted straight up grass, didn't want the rhubarb, didn't want the chives or the mint that she had in her yard, all this moss and other um, different plants, ground cover that I don't know the names of. And she said, take whatever you want. So that was the coolest thing. It was exactly what I wanted. So I also offered that she could come to my place and dig up some sod grass if she wanted, but she didn't seem to want to do that. But I walked away from that feeling like this was exactly what I wanted. So I've had more and more days like that, moments like that. And I've also experienced time very oddly. It's almost like time is moving very fast in me. I'm moving with time very fast. But 
I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like seeing the time. I'm not registering time the same way. I'm, I don't know how to describe it. That's all I can really say. It's very different. And I feel like I'm traveling through space and time in a different way. Anyway, this episode is about tunnel vision and when it can help. Sometimes we think of tunnel vision as a bad thing. It can have a bad rap because we feel like we should be open-minded or take in other people's thoughts and opinions in consideration. But sometimes tunnel vision can be helpful. So what I really want to talk about with tunnel vision is the idea that we can just look and focus in a certain way or on certain things so that it can support us. Now, for some people, they might say, well, that's toxic positivity. For example, if you're focusing on just the things that make you feel good or just the, the phrases and the words and the thoughts that make you feel good and you want to avoid the others or not look at the others, some people call that toxic positivity. It can be considered that. It's just that why not focus on the positive things or the good things, the things that are actually there, the things that are real, so that it does support you and it allows you to feel a stronger foundation in yourself or more centered in yourself. Why not do that if it helps? We're not saying to not look at things that are necessary to look at in your life or to avoid discomfort. It's just that there are times when discomfort is so much in your life or stress or overwhelm can be everywhere in your life and it doesn't really help to look at it. It doesn't support your nervous system to feel more semblance of safety or wholeness so that you can actually feel empowered and feel in yourself in a way that allows you to do something or hold yourself or support yourself. So tunnel vision, my brother put it really nicely when he was teaching me about mountain biking. I mentioned it a long time ago on the podcast. I can't remember which episode, but I'll mention it again now where he said, okay, you fell, <laughs> you fell in that pit. You f- pretty much fell off the trail and into a bush. Where were you looking? Where was your head facing? Where were your eyes looking right before you fell? And of course I said, well, yeah, at the cliff in the bush, I was, I was scared that it was actually a larger cliff And he was like, yep, I figured wherever you look, you're going to, if you think you're going to fall where you look, you're going to fall. If you look straight, instead of looking at the hole or the cactus or whatever's in your periphery, if you look straight, you're going to go straight. Because your head is balanced on top of your body and it's going to be way more centered and balance you so that you go forward instead of falling in. It took me so long to actually like get that. It was like I my eyes would just be magnets to the things around me that I was scared of and the rock on the ground and the root that was sticking out. And I could hear him in my head say, no, just look straight. But still I'm looking at the side or something and I'm tipping a little. I know this sounds really ridiculous, but when you're on a bike going at high speeds, this is what was going on for me. So (laughs) going straight, looking straight, tunnel vision in a way, but using your periphery and not letting those things that are coming at you or laying on the ground, things that you're passing by, not letting those things affect you as much unless it needs to. So how does this apply to life? This was basically a life coaching session for me from my brother because I felt like that was exactly how I wanted to strengthen myself in my life. I could be so thrown off by things happening. Being a very sensitive person, an empathic person, I can feel things happening around me and I 
might be easily swayed by them. I might get triggered. But to focus my awareness on what I want to feel, what I'm doing or where I'm going, is a skill that didn't come as easily to me before. So in practice, this looks like feeling into certain states of being and certain emotions that I want to feel, like peace, calmness, even when things are happening around me that are chaotic. So there's a lot of construction going on at my house, like different projects, and sometimes they don't get done, like pieces of them get done, and then the house is a mess. People, sometimes contractors that come in and out and they have their own energies they're bringing. So things like that, like that are not in order. And having tunnel vision has really helped me just focusing on feeling calmness. What can I do to bring that? But also just being in the state of calmness or peace or contentment or any any feeling that you want to feel. You can access that and bring it to the moment from inside out, no matter what's going on around you. This is really an ultimate freedom because you don't rely on your circumstances then or other people and what they're doing to make you feel a certain way. You can produce it from the inside. And granted, different circumstances are different. If there is something happening that you need to attend to, then you do that. Sometimes tunnel vision can be helpful if you're susceptible to other people's opinions and you could just stay focused on what connects you with what you're doing and what's important to you. Just detach from what other people think of it and make what you feel and what you think important to you. If you prioritize where you're going, what you're doing, how you're feeling, notice what happens. Especially when I'm starting something new or when I've expanded to another level of my being and taking those steps of that expansion, there may be ways that the outpouring of the past shows up now or that Certain things want to make their way to the surface that seem opposite of where I'm going or feel could feel discouraging, could feel like confirmation that I can't do this or I am not going to be supported in this or I'm not able to execute X, Y, and Z. These are the things too that I start to push to the periphery and allow myself to focus and hone in on what it is that I desire and the state of being that connects with that desire, that connects with the outcomes or the feeling that I'll have, which is really everything. It's a state of being. We create a state of being or we focus on certain states of being and those states of being begin to manifest. So if I'm Accessing the state of being that connects up with these kinds of manifestations, it's just going to be natural that those things happen. But if I focus on the bumps in the road, the things that come in and sideswipe, and I turn my head and look at that pothole, I'm going to fall in. And all of those things that are happening are an outpouring of the past. What's happening right now is the manifestation in physical form of all of the previous energies, good and bad or pleasant and unpleasant, beneficial or not. That's all it is. It's part of the past. You're just seeing it right now. So it doesn't mean that anything in the future is connected with that past, with the present. Anything new can be created from here forward. So it doesn't quite help us to look at what happened already and what's happening right now. 
our true creative power is focusing and bringing our attention to our inner state of being, to where we're going as well. They're hand in hand. And allowing that energy of who we are to come forward. The energy of what we want and desire rather than what we don't want. Focusing on what we do enjoy, focusing on what brings us comfort, on what soothes us, on what brings us happiness, contentment, any good feels, whatever those are for you. When you place your attention on those, when you have tunnel vision on those, it just reproduces and generates more. So why not do it? And what happens then too is when you have that extra inner nervous system safety inside, a new baseline maybe that's created by all of the safety you give it, all of the focus on on the safety, on what's truly here, then your body's also able to digest any of the things that have been stressful, overwhelming, traumatic, anything that is unpleasant. And then your whole capacity begins to grow even further. I'm really excited about this because it is a way to harness the creative power that we are. Creative as in the ability to create our experience moment to moment and a whole life of beauty. And if more of us did that, imagine the kind of world we would live in. Imagine the kind of world you'll live in, in your, just in your own life, if you did that. Now, yes, I'm totally aware, because I experienced myself, that there are times or there are certain really solidified experiences in us, energies in us, that um, perhaps come from trauma, something so overwhelming that we need to look there, and we cannot do a tunnel vision on something else and it ends up hurting us. It ends up being something that festers or grows worse or creates physical illness as a signal to look there. And by all means, look there then. But having tunnel vision on some of the good things and then switching over in a conscious way, making a turn, well, If it's unconscious, that happens too, but notice when you notice that you're already like on the other side of the forest, so to say. But when you've made a turn, notice it or make the turn and then balance it with feeling the things that support you, the things that bring you more safety and nourishment so that your nervous system, your body, your energy can go there to the challenging things so that it can digest it and metabolize it. So where in your life would it be helpful to have tunnel vision? Are there places you fall off the road because you are looking at the pothole or the cliff instead of looking down the path that's yours? Where are you pushed and pulled by circumstances or things that happen that are possibly even of your creation. But where do you get swayed? Perhaps where do you go when you get swayed? What kinds of thoughts and emotions come up when you get thrown off course or when you get absorbed into the chaos around you? And is there inner chaos? Is there inner chaos that hijacks everything and creates something worse for you? Do you tailspin into um, an inner trigger, like some way that you talk to yourself or beliefs that come up that make you feel worse? Where is your attention? On those things or on something that could allow you to feel more resourced? So I hope this was helpful for you. Please, Be gentle with yourself, be kind, 
Thank you so much for listening. And I appreciate all of you out there listening. So many new listeners as well. It's great to have you here. And so many long standing listeners that are just tuning in when they want to. I am so appreciative. If you've never given this podcast a review on iTunes, feel free to do so. The link is going to be in the show notes. I would appreciate it so much if you shared something about your experience with the podcast as a review, and it helps the podcast so much. Thank you. See you next time on the Embody Podcast.